What am I studying in Gen AI to enhance my career? Most of you know me as a principal specialist SA working at AWS. But in my past life, I was working with machine learning as well. As you could see from my Kaggle competition page, I was top 11% in the world for Home Depot product search machine learning competition. All right, let's get started. So in the beginning, you start with a machine learning model such as ChatGPT, which is text to text, as in you send your question in text, get the answer back in text, or text to image, such as stable diffusion, where you send your question in a text and it gives an image back. How do you use it? So with ChatGPT, you simply type your question in the website or the app and you get the answer back as well in text. Now this is not useful for applications at all because in application, you cannot just go and insert your questions in a chat, get the answer, maybe the answer is not right, you re-ask the question, all that stuff. So how is this used in application? In application, you need to send the prompt using a code, such as Python, JavaScript, Java, etc. And you need to get the answer in a structured format such as JSON, because an application cannot parse a free form answer easily. When the answer comes back in a structured format, the code knows how to parse it, what parts to take and feed it to the next part of the process. Where will this code run? Your code can run in any compute service such as Amazon EC2. Inside this EC2, your code will run. And we call this prompt engineering via code. Learning prompt engineering using ChatGPT website or console is useless in applications. I know it's easy and fun to do and there are thousands of videos out there because they get clicks, but if you go for interview for prompt engineering or Gen AI, everyone's going to ask you, can you tell me how to send this prompt and parse your answers using some kind of programming language? I am learning prompt engineering using code from deeplearning.ai courses. I am not sponsored by them, but they have excellent free courses. I am taking this ChatGPT prompt engineering for developers, building systems with the ChatGPT API, as well as LangChain for LLM application development and LangChain chat with your data. Now, going back to the choice of compute, Amazon EC2 is just an example. You can run this code in any compute service such as Fargate, ECS, EKS, Lambda, etc. Now, what am I learning? I am learning prompt engineering using Python. You can choose any programming language, but Python and JavaScript have advantages because there are a lot of library and examples using these two languages. I'll come to that in a second. Now, when you are doing this prompt engineering, you also need to consume your local data because not everything will be stored in the model. And you do that using LangChain. Remember I said Python and JavaScript has advantages because LangChain is done using either Python or JavaScript. And I am learning how to use LangChain to consume your document or URL, text, spreadsheet, etc., and augment that to LLM and get answers. And this is very applicable for all the businesses out there. No business is just going to take the chat GPT model or stable diffusion model and run as is. They need to feed the model, the business data that they already have. How do you call these models? All these models expose a URL and you need to call the URL just like you call an API and then you need to pass your questions and other parameters in the input. We call this as inference. At this point, I'm pretty sure you folks realize that there needs to be multiple LLM models, not just ChatGPT. At the end of the day, ChatGPT is a closed model. It's not open sourced. So you cannot really fine tune it and change it based on your business needs. So I'm just going to replace that with LLM models. And this is also what I'm learning. There are multiple LLM models. I'm learning which model to pick for what job. For example, the model from Anthropic, which is Claude 2, is really good for code generation and text-to-text -text question answer. Flan T5 model is great for summarizing text. 
The new stable diffusion is great for text to image as well as fine tuning. One thing I am not learning is the inner working of these models. Okay, now that you have picked the right model, you need to host this model, you need to fine tune your model based on your application, and then you need to deploy this model so that your code can inference it. Now these are the services that can do that and these are on the increasing levels of difficulty. I am learning Amazon Bedrock. You can think of Amazon Bedrock as the marketplace of foundational models. It hosts multiple models and it exposes the URL. You can simply call the URL with your input data. You can also instantiate your own copy from the Amazon Bedrock and fine tune those models for your business. The next option is Amazon SageMaker. In Amazon Bedrock, all the models are already up and running. With SageMaker, you need to select the model and then provision underlying infrastructure such as EC2 to run those models. It gives you a little bit more control, but again, you need to learn a little bit more. I'm learning SageMaker Jumpstart. I'm learning how to fine tune the models as well as the Jupyter Notebook, how it works with SageMaker. And the last option, which is the hardest, is self-managed. Let's say for an example, when the model is deployed and thousands of people are calling it, you need to ensure that your model is scalable. With Bedrock and SageMaker, they ensure that the inference is scaled up and down. With self-manage, you need to take care of that. As well as since you are running these models in your own uh, VM such as EC2, you need to ensure the underlying virtual machine is secure, you need to keep up with the upgrade, you need to know how to scale it, etc. Now, I already have a deep knowledge on Kubernetes, so I'm utilizing that. So what I'm learning is what are the machine learning frameworks that can run on top of EKS to do this host, fine tune, and deploy. For that, I am learning Ray framework, Kubeflow, and Jupyter Hub. Ray is the newest framework and is a little bit easier to use, so I am doing a little bit more work on Ray. I'm just learning Kubeflow to answer customer questions, and Jupyter Hub is just a notebook where you run prompts and lines of code rather than writing the whole code in one shot. And for Ray, Kubeflow, Jupyter Hub on EKS, I'm learning it from Data on EKS, also available for free. If you go to this Data on EKS website, click the blueprints, and under machine learning, you will see Ray on EKS, Jupyter Hub on EKS, as well as Kubeflow on AWS. They also have good documentation with some free links to study further, so check them out. All the links given in description. Now with EKS, the worker nodes will be EC2. There are some specific types of EC2 that can run this kind of machine learning models more efficiently. So I'm learning when to use GPU, when to use Trainium, and when to use Inferentia. I am not a data scientist. Now I'm only learning the components that can augment my existing knowledge. In addition, I am learning the concepts of vector database and I am using Amazon Code Whisperer to do some coding. How am I finding time to learn Gen AI? Well, for that, you need to watch my time management video. Also, if you want to learn Gen AI with me, I will be releasing more Gen AI tutorials, concepts, etc. Make sure to subscribe to this channel. All right, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. Bye.